I know you missed us. The Blazer Focus Podcast is back. Aaron Fentress along with Craig Burnback. Unfortunately, we got nothing new to report on the Damian Lillard situation. It's still chaos. It's still a mess. Training camp is only like 11 days away. I'm going to be there in Santa Barbara. Am I going to be covering Dame drama or am I becoming the, the start of the scoot? Uh, Shaden Ant era. I don't know yet, but we're going to talk about that and more here on the Blazer Focus Podcast with my main man, Craig Burnback. Craig, what's up? How's your summer been? Hey, man. I guess your summer's over. Your summer's uh, over. Chaotic. You're back in school mode, right? Oh, yes. I'm working. I'm happy to be having that. Uh, my kid's in oh. kindergarten, so my life is uh, full of new stresses <laughs> and, and wonderings, but uh, I missed you, so I'm glad. Um, I... I'm not super shocked at this point that the Lillard thing hasn't uh, moved forward in any way. Um, well, I'm, I'm not shocked that the trade hasn't happened. I am shocked that there's been almost no movement. <laughs> um, and I will answer your first question. You are definitely going to be covering the Scoot, Shade, and Sharp mm-hmm. you know, era Blazers basketball. It's just whether or not there's a big <laughs> shadow behind it. Because I can promise you there isn't going to be a day. I don't know if I can promise, but I feel strongly there's just no there's no room for a Damian Lillard, Shade, and Sharp, Scoot, Henderson there might, movement. There, there might you know, be, there might a, be the start of the season. Team. You know? Okay, let's start with what's – okay, so Ooh. what's out there now is just a lot of reporting, air quotes, about – you know, there's there's more talks going on. The Blazers have picked up the pace, and they're talking to teams. However, I'm hearing they haven't really talked to Miami yet, and Miami's kind of sitting there waiting. But they are talking to other teams in terms of trying to find another team who might give them an offer for Lillard. Two other teams who might get involved had nothing to do with Miami in a trade, and maybe Lillard goes to one of those teams. That's out there. Um, I'm told that there's not great traction in these areas, that they're really not being wowed by anything that's substantial. Otherwise, I think we would have heard about it by now, especially from the national guys who have sources all over the league, not just with one team. Um, And it's looking like it could be headed to Dame being in camp. Um, I'm just, I'm fascinated by that. I think it's amazing that we're at this point. It's kind of trippy to me that they just took two months off and did nothing. And now they're trying to scramble to get something done now. I don't know if that strengthened their position. I've kind of heard that it hasn't, that it's kind of this whole thing is being viewed as kind of a clown show in a lot of different ways. We'll see how it ends up. But as we get ready for camp, I guess, you know, my, I guess the first question is what level of ridiculousness have we reached? Or do you think everything's copacetic and, and moving along at, at, at the right pace? <laughs> Um, I don't think it's copacetic, um, but I think it takes, you know, these things and negotiations. I've, uh, been involved in some negotiation things in my life. It's always crazy until it gets done. You know, nothing matters except for the deal. So you got 11 days. It's kind of like it, it'll take a day, you know, for it to happen and then it's over. So, um, I don't get too hung up with the countdown uh, or listening to rumors here, rumors there, except for the one where the Blazers haven't spoken to Miami in a very, in a real yeah. situation, right? That part is interesting to me. Now, is their goal to come and have two offers and say to Miami, right. what you got? Um, and what does that mean for Damian Lillard? Damian Lillard, based on what the NBA has said, um, cannot openly tell anyone anymore that he's right. not going to play for people because he'll get fined. It doesn't mean he'll play for people right. just because he won't say it. He can't say he's not going to report to camp, but he could not record. It's report possible, to camp. but I mean, I, I've been told that he would. He would. He would. They don't he have would, to pay him. He would show and pay do his due diligence. Do his due diligence. Get paid and just try and get out. Unless, see, see I still think like if he went to I, the like if he went to Milwaukee. Let's say he goes to Milwaukee. He walks in there. And he sees Giannis. And he goes, oh, my God, I've never played with anything remotely close to that monster. We can win this thing. Then I think maybe he smells a ring, and I think he's like, all right, I can do this. Like, I still think that could happen. But you're still running the risk. You, have, you should clear it with him before you pull the trigger and make sure that he's going to come in there. Oh, absolutely. No one's trading for David Right, because if you do. Without that. Yeah. You're not trading for Damon right. Lillard and, and hope he I plays. love when people say, yeah, but he, he's going to be professional. He's going to go out there basically just be a good little boy and do what he's told. 
Yeah, but NBA players, if it's ever a sport where you can go out there and mail it in, but still go 25 and 8, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's the NBA. He can average 25 and 8 and be mailing it in and not necessarily playing winning basketball. That's the thing about the NBA. Like you say all the time, someone's got to score some points. Is it efficient points? Is it a, like, but if you're score scoring 20. 25, are you being horribly lazy on defense and just giving up an extra 10 you shouldn't have? Do those eight assists come with two ridiculous turnovers that happen because you just don't care? Are you leading? Are you doing the little things? So he can go somewhere and put up numbers and still just not want to be there and be like, I want out and be an unhappy camper. And so I don't know why a team would want that. The other thing I want to point out is we're seeing, I've been saying this for, since day one, the age freaking matters. 33, and that contract matters. People try yeah. to pretend it didn't, but now you're seeing other people talk about it more and more about that contract is the albatross. What are they going to do when he's 36? That's a lot of money to be paying a 33-year-old. So that's being factored into this now more so as well, which I think is limiting what the Blazers can even get from other teams because other, other teams see that too. And the Blazers' mindset is still, we're trading 28-year-old Damian, which is, you're not. So you're not going to get that value. So it's, it's all just annoying right now. Huh? But this is, of course, this is all, this is all what happens in negotiation. You're trying now. Your team that might be interested in Dame, you're going to play up as much as you can, right? Why he's less valuable, and that, yeah, and that, that's what they're going to. But it's legit. trust me, when the team takes right Dame, right. and it, it's a real thing. But when a team takes Dame, they're suddenly going to tell you how many yeah. that he's in great yeah. shape. He's going to be great. Um, we've seen the Chris Pauls of the world, the LeBron James of the world. It's all part of the right. dance, right? But it's real. It's a lot of money for a 33-year-old. There's a big difference between 33 and 23. Ten years, as a matter of fact. And I don't even have a math degree. But, uh, you know, he's not – 28 is is like that's – you know, in the NFL, they say after 28, a running back's done. You know what I mean? Like there, there's things that happen uh, for most athletes. Now, Dame has had a career where he did not get injured much. His knees have been good. His legs have been good. He had a midsection injury and, uh, you know, some foot stuff. Uh, but at 33, you worry. You know, you have to. Um, but you could trade that for a championship. I mean, I'm a Knicks fan. I, it's not going to happen anymore because we got a point guard. But trust me, I would gladly take Damian Lillard for two years, win a title, and then suck for another four. Because we suck right. for thirty years, so like that. But you got to be a team. But, um, but you got to be a team that can a actually win a championship with him. You can't be. Yeah, that's just flipping yes. the coin. Like otherwise, you're you're. I think you're wasting money and time. Yeah, right. That's why there's. There, that's right. where there's not that many teams, and you need money. You got to have the space. You got to be able to make it work. You got to have assets. Um, and that's the problem. Is that this is not. Um, We've talked about it. He's not Kevin Durant, right. and he's not 27, 28 years old. And his contract's as big as it can get. You know, like it's huge. So, um, but I still, I still don't, I'm not at this place where like, oh my God, it's never going to happen, whatever. Now, a day before camp, mm -hmm. I'll be in a different place because I don't think bringing him back makes so little sense to me. Um. And all those people say, he's under contract, he's got to play. Okay, whatever, that's fine. You're not winning it. You're like, what's your points to win a championship, right? Like, that's what it is. What are you going to do? You you have three point guards now. One's a 33-year-old all-star. One's a 25-year-old guy that you've been grooming to be the, the replacement that could play the two. And now you just <laughs> drafted a 19-year-old, like, to play the position. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what is the point of this? The point is what? To try to get a better deal? At what point is it that's the best deal we have? And once we start playing. I mean, when you go into a season, you are now looking at multiple teams starting to play actual basketball. And some of the teams that thought they might need a point guard might go, ah, you know, I think we're okay. You know, yes, there's a chance someone gets hurt or they the Miami becomes more desperate, but what I don't. Miami's not a desperate right. organization. Like Pat Riley, I mean, has any, it's Pat Riley. Like, come on, like, stop. You're not going to scare Pat Riley into something. <laughs> Their coach is the best coach in the NBA. He's been coaching the, the heat since he was eight. <laughs> you know, like he's not, he's not worried about his gig. You know, we're not looking at a desperate team here. So it seems weird that 
Portland seems to be trying to play hardball with an organ, like sit down, talk about it, and then either come out and say, there's no way, there's no fit for Miami. Sorry, Dame, there's no fit. What are we going to do? Right. Or make the trade. I mean, that's a, that to me seems like what you should do uh, because Miami's not going to go, oh, my God, what are we going to – oh, my God, I've never been in a situation like this. Or what about my legacy? Pat Riley's like, yeah, uh, let me hang my rings up on all these th- – like, let me count all my rings, yeah. and then I'll call you back. It just seems weird to be playing hardball with a uh, – or they're not even playing hardball from what you know, you're reporting is that they're not even playing ball With Miami, they're not playing ball. With other teams, they're, they're, they're trying to negotiate. Yep. So here, here is – okay. So I've made this point numerous times in the last few months. If Miami comes to the table with just a weak sauce, take it or leave it, you know, one of our young players and a couple of picks and Duncan Robinson and Lowry, then I'm like, no, you, you wouldn't take that. My, my whole thing has always been the starting base – point would be three first and hero and then figure it out from there because hero could be turned into another player or another first maybe some swaps were involved one of the two young floors maybe both of them who knows whatever but you got to sort of iron that out i just don't believe the blazers are going to go out and find better than that from anywhere else now if miami has backed off of that now because we're two months out of you know the window when this should have been done probably in las vegas if mine was like okay well we're not even doing this now we're we think we can maybe keep Hero and give you something else because we don't think you can beat what originally was reportedly out there on the table anyway. So now we're gonna we're gonna lower the price. If you know if that happens, then maybe I can see where Cronin is like, okay, now I'm getting a really bad offer, and I think I can at least do better than a a trimmed down version of what the original framework was with Miami. Then I can see where maybe you roll the dice going into the season. When I was on with Chris Maddox last week, he he thinks that the Blazers start the season with Dame, that things are going to shake shake up around the league, and that there's going to be some teams out there who are going to decide they really want Dame, and they're going to come with some massive offers. And I just I don't one I don't buy that. Again, that's going to be better than what we just talked about with Miami. And two, you run the risk of Dame getting injured, and that's not like a, oh it's not going to happen. He got injured early last year. He hurt his calf. Right, the year before it was the uh, the abs, which he got you know repaired, and that didn't bother him last year. But <clears throat> at his age, with his mileage, it could be a hamstring, it could be a, a minor knee thing, it could be an ankle thing, it could be a calf thing again, it could be anything. So then, if he's damaged goods, now now the value is even less because now he's thirty three and a half, and then if you can't move him at the deadline, you go into next offseason, he's thirty four. Now you're screwed. Good luck trying to trade him at 34. That's just ridiculous. And anyone who's even interested in him is going to come at you really low ball because you just wasted everyone's time for a year. So the only reason I can see bringing him in this season is if the best deal you can get out there is just, you know, two first and a mediocre player. I probably wouldn't do that. But if you sat down with Miami and actually went back and forth and negotiated, which I've been told hasn't happened, and people out of Miami have reported the exact same thing from the heats, from their heat sources, that that has not happened. There has not been a okay, we want this. Can we get that? Can we do this? Can we do that? That has not happened. And so for me, that's just a red flag because that's where you know he wants to go. And that's the team that expressed the most interest in getting him. So at least sit down and have those conversations. If they don't work out, then you can pull back and say, yeah, mine is being ridiculous. And then you can leak out what they're being ridiculous about through your boy Roge, Woj, and then we can all react to it. But to me, if you don't sit down and at least have the conversation with Miami, you're doing a disservice to the franchise and you're doing a disservice to Dame. And I just think we're heading to the point where Dame is going to leave this situation having a lot of negativity toward the people who run the Blazers. And that, to me, shouldn't be worth it because the people running the Blazers are not more important than Dame Lillard as far as I'm concerned. Not in any way, shape, or form. Because at the end of the day, people are going to remember Damian Lillard more than they're going to remember anyone else working in that, in that building who doesn't wear a uniform. So you know how I feel about that. It's not worth a draft pick to not have Dame come back and celebrate his jersey in the rafters in the long term. Like I, I just if it's you guys, what the the franchise decided to wait to trade him, and this is where they're at. My question in your scenario is because mm-hmm. I'm all about risk reward in life. Like that's how you weigh some things. Why would the Blazers play Damian Lillard? If he's on the roster, like why would he, what is your benefit 
to show to show him that he's a ball and make someone go, oh my god, we gotta have him. I don't know. I know exactly. There's tape. I mean, I see. I I mean, what what is it? Honestly, and I'm not no sarcasm, nothing. I'm honestly asking, why would the Blazers, if you bring Damian Lillard back because you don't have the deal you want, okay, but why would you play him when you need to play Scoot? You need to play um, Sharp, um, and if you still, you know, have. Simons, you need to play Simons. Like, and why would you risk? You're not trying. You're not winning a title with this team. Like, you didn't well, do yeah, it. Not, not no one Tyler, thinks are you that, right? Team. <laughs> like, no. no. I mean, if Damien came, if Damien came back, so why would you? If Damien came you back, are with everyone, Damian, everything went perfectly. No one got injured, which we know is never going to happen. Then, yeah, they have a chance to be a playing team. But we know that's not going to happen. Nurse going to get hurt. Grant's going to get hurt. Dan's going to hurt. And so I'm just saying, that's I'm just saying, if, if they kept it for the entire season. I'm saying, could they be a playing team? If everything went perfectly, they could. But nothing's going to go perfectly. We all know that. People are going to get injured, and then they're going to have losing streaks because of those injuries. So, and you're and you're you have all the same problems you had last year. You got no depth. You got no veteran depth. You're small. You added some length. You added Moses Brown. He's seven foot, great, but he's not yeah, exactly. He's not he's not effective veteran length. He's just a big tall guy. No offense, Moses, but you don't move the needle in terms of making this team a playoff team with Dame in any way, shape, or form, I believe. So, yeah, you're right. You're not you're not going to win this year no matter how much you, you say you think you could because you're talent level. And if you play him, you risk injury. So, yeah, I, I mean, the scenario has been broached to me before that Dame could show up, get paid, but not play. Just stay home. Yeah. Which has happened in the NBA. Right. Happened in the now, NBA Now, maybe before. they say, well, we're not going to do that because – we want him around and we want to sell tickets <laughs> to sell tickets. I don't wow. know. But, but honestly, like if your goal is to eventually win a championship and you have this contract that you you're, you're going to move. If you wanted Damian Lillard to be on the team, you shouldn't have drafted a point guard. I mean, like that's like a 19 year old point guard. You're not going to in the NBA. It's not the NFL where you let a guy play, sit the bench for four years and then you play him at the quarterback position, right? That's not what happens here. You play, play them. And so I look at it of why would you play? I mean, like, what's he going to do? Wow. He's averaging 34. Like, right. yeah, we know he's good. Like you haven't improved. No one's like, my goodness. You know what? I just realized <laughs> Damon Lewis is a really, really good player and he might be able to help us. No. So he can either get hurt or he, which it's never happened because he's always in great shape. But what if, what if he looks slow? And also, he's going to be playing with players that aren't that good, you know. Like, and there's a chance you're going to ask him to play the out of position when you bring Scoot in. Because if I'm the Blazers, if I play Damon, which I'm not, I wouldn't. I would say we're going to pay you. You can use our facilities. Uh, just wait. I would not move Scoot to the two. He's my future. So if you are going to play them together, you're going to ask him to go do something that he's not. I mean, he's the, one of the best, if not the best pick and roll point guard in the NBA. So like, are you not going to let him do that? Like, cause he doesn't have the ball. It's I, a, dude, I, it's, a, it's asinine. That's it's the part asinine. that gets me every time. He's going he's to play 32 minutes. That's 32 minutes you're taking away from Scoot and, and Sharp that they could be playing in the backcourt. You're, you're just erasing those minutes for those guys. And for, for, and for what reason? Sh- like you said, showcase him. Why? He's been showcased for 11 years. We all know what he can do. You risk injury. What, so you can win a few extra games? You don't want to win any extra games. Winning ex- w- w- No matter how much they try and pretend like they want to win, this season is headed toward That'd be bad. another tank. I'm calling it right now. Post-All-Star break, guys will start having phantom injuries, just like the last two seasons. They will be well under 500, and they'll go into tank mode. So, it, it, so games you win early yeah, because, of, not because of Dame are going to hurt you in the end. It might co- I'll tell you a story. My Chicago Bulls, Miritich lit it up. 2017-18 season, Miritich went off and helped them win a bunch of games. Then they finally, because they were trying to showcase him to trade him, they didn't really, they didn't, I don't think they ever traded him, but then at the end of the year, they ended up with the seventh pick, and, and got Wendell Carter instead of having maybe the fifth pick or the third pick and maybe trade it up to get 
Luka Doncic, or maybe just ended up at number three. Like, they just did everything wrong in terms of putting themselves in position to get the best player. So if you have Damian out there playing, he's winning games for you. You're hurting yourself in the back end because you're going to be in the lottery because this roster is not a winning roster. So yeah, it, it makes no sense whatever, whatsoever. I would invite him to camp, let him train. I would not play him. I would not play him. I say, just go home and chill. And we're, we're, we're trying to trade you. Go work out. And if I'm Damian, I'm like, cool. As long as I'm getting my paycheck. Yeah, I would. Well, I would, I would do that him. too. But I'm saying if you, if you're if you're trying to hold out, no, I know. But if you're, yeah, I, <laughs> I know, I'm just saying, if like, you're trying to hold out, if you're trying like, to hold out for the sense. season, just so you get other people interested to come right. and get them. But then are they trading for a rusty player? Like the whole the whole thing is just that's not, man. I just I, and it doesn't. That's not. That's not like. That's not a winning. It's not a proven winning strategy. You know, for these things. I mean. Kevin Durant asked to be traded, he got traded. Like other people asked to be traded, they get traded. And now we'll see with James Harden, right? Maybe he doesn't, maybe he doesn't this time, but he's been traded before. I do so. think Dan gets traded by the um, deadline. Deadline's a very important thing I, in here. There's been no deadline. So there'll be a deadline coming up. If they don't trade him by the trade deadline, then 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 it's just then it's beyond absurdity. Because now you're because now he's gonna be 34. And if you there's no way you're gonna get more form at 34 than you would have gotten right now. So if you don't at least move them by the trade deadline, then it's complete dysfunction junction. So, but at least there's a deadline there where they have to do something. And so they're going to hope that there's going to be other teams who are going to be like, man, if we had Dane, we could win the title. And so they're going to come with a bunch of assets. So maybe that happens. If it does, props to Cronin for pulling it off. But I just, I just believe that they sat down with Miami and worked things out. They could come out with an amicable deal now. So now... Are you a team, if he's been sitting out for two months, do you think he could just show up and be awesome? I mean, I, I, that would worry me at 33 or 34. So I just – I don't think it goes that way, and I don't see what – I mean, the risk of him getting injured or looking – I don't see risk-reward. I see no reward in playing Damian Lillard. All he'll do is prove what everyone already knows, which he's outstanding. That's best-case scenario. He's awesome, like he had been, which everyone thinks. Your worst case scenarios, he pulls his Achilles tendon explodes, and now you can't trade Ever. him at all. Um, <laughs> but there's a million other bad things that can happen. You know, all in- players get injured while playing. I mean, that's it. They get injured while practicing. I mean, even though you don't play him in games, guys get hurt in practice. He's still going to run. He's got to stay in shape. And the best way to 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 get in basketball shape is not to not play basketball. You know, so. Um, I don't think sitting him for you know two and a half months and then a team saying now we go get him and he's going to be – you can't be in NBA basketball shape without playing NBA games. We know that because we see it every year. I mean, James Harden once came in like lost well, like crazy? seven minutes. He was wearing a fat suit, wasn't he? Was he wearing a fat suit? Because he came here. He he lit – oh, my God. It was, it was, the, it was the, uh, the the first – yeah, season that after the bubble. He came here in an early game. It was like 44 and something and looked like – the round mound of rebound. And then like two weeks later, he was all, you know, runway models felt. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, anyway. Okay. So look, I, at the end of the day for me, I, I can I just say your fetches, his head oh is going to explode. With so, all this. He can't, he, I'm he just, so done with all this. He can't understand I, I, it. So he can't, no, he it's can't just, articulate. It's it. just dysfunction. It's ridiculousness. I, I, I roll my eyes at the entire thing. If I didn't cover the blazers, this wasn't my job. I would not give a rat's ass about any of this. I would just look up every once in a while, see what's going on and just laugh at it. And not laugh. I would have dropped my season tickets, which I did do, by the way, I dropped my season tickets. My two season ticket partners didn't want anything to do with this team. So they wanted out because they don't want to pay for this, because they know that the season's, the team, the team's going to stink and they're overpaying for their tickets. So the tickets, the season tickets I had, if I ever want, well, I'd go to every game anyway, but if my family ever wanted to go to a game, I could get those same tickets for half the price <laughs> that I would have paid for the season ticket, because that's what happens with the Blazers. When they're not winning, the ticket value just goes through, through the bottom of the floor. Um, so it's it, the whole thing is just ludicrous to me, but... Here's one thing I just want to say again. I think I said this before. At the end of the day, the Blazers went into this thing thinking that they had complete control of the situation, that they could do whatever they want with Dame. They could build around him and keep him, or they could move on with Scoot and still keep him, or if they're going to trade him, they could trade him anywhere. And they forgot that superstar players in this league have some leverage. They have some power. 
and Dame flexed his power, and then everything got screwed up from there. If Dame had just, you know, not said anything about well, Miami or nothing, maybe he was traded during, you know, summer league. But it got personal, it got contentious, and now we're just at a point where it's 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 careening toward this cliff, and the cliff is training camp. And having Dame tra- here's the other thing: you bring Dame to training camp, aside from taking minutes from the guys you're trying to develop. You know the guy doesn't want to be there and doesn't believe in the team. He knows this team isn't any good and he wants out. So why do you want the most prominent player maybe in franchise history around this team that you're trying to start over with when you know that guy basically looks around and says, I can't win with this crew? Like, why would you want that in the in at camp? Why do you want that at camp? Hey, let's bring the let's bring the camp, the most powerful guy probably in franchise history, and he doesn't want to play with you people, not individually as people. But he doesn't want to play for this team because he knows this team isn't any good. Why would you want that around? And Dame's, like, Dame's going to be great. I, I bet Dame would go in there I, and he'd no mentor Scoot. He'd help the guys with the system. He'd be a pro. But you know he does not want to be there. He's there against his will. Why do you want that? And it's been made personal. It just doesn't make any sense. So I'm at a place right now that I'm not where you are because I still think a deal is going to get done before training camp. And that this is just right. part of the noise. And this is what happens. Like, you know, like teams, you know, they, they're doing everything they can to let people know we don't have to trade them because you don't want to be in a position to be desperate. Right. And, um, and also you want your fan base to, to believe that you are able to make the best deal possible. So whatever you're able to get, you're going to say, you know, we were able to get this or this. um, And this is part of negotiations. Um, And they won some of this because they got the league to come up and say, you can't do this. So basically make Dame and his agent look bad. I mean, that's, you know, they made it personal. um, They made it personal. Or get the fans. Yes. 100%. But the fans can, they can at least tell their fans who are saying, you know, you got to make them play for you. Like, oh, we did. We, we made it clear, you know, we, you know, the league made it clear that if, if we decide not to trade him, that he has to play for us. So it looks more yeah. like the Blazers decision right. when they trade him. Um, I don't think it was worth it, but I'm just saying like, I'm at a place where the Blazers are doing what, uh, what they think they have to do. Um, Damian Lillard is being quiet. Right now, his agent is being more quiet. And to me, that means that they have some hope, you know, that that, that something might get done. Um, and I also believe these things yeah. happen quickly when they happen. So um, I'm if now if they go into training camp and Damon Lillard's on the roster, <laughs> I'll probably punt and say, OK, well, they got a they got a few days in training camp to make the deal. Right. So my thing is, if they're they're three days away from uh, the regular season and there still hasn't been a trade. I- I'm going to start sounding the alarm of like, what the heck are they doing? Um, all that matters is that he's traded before they play their first, their first game, you know, like that before to me is all the first that regular matters. season like, game. And the D de- the yeah. De- yeah, yeah. Cause the deal is all that matters. That's all that matters. And no team's going to be worried that, Oh, Damon Lillard's, you know, no, it wasn't in training camp. Well, he'll be, he'll be, he'll, he'll be training. It, it might training take a little anything. time, but who cares? It, it, it's, it's, you know, basketball's not football. I mean, he, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he'll be able to figure out whatever offense the team runs that he'll go join, right? And whatever you yeah. have, you have eighty, ga- you know, you have eighty games to figure it out before the playoffs, and any team that's going to trade for him is going to be thinking tight. Well, yeah, so we hope they they could go hope. for and they, they, so. Let me well, let me ask you. Um, let me ask you another question. Um, what if, what if they trade him to a team that has no chance to contend, truly contend? What if they did that? Why would why would a team that can't contend trade? For I Damian agree. Miller? I don't see why a team would. I'm just saying that they're well. Okay, but they wouldn't. the The teams out there in the rumor world that he could go to are teams that would not. They don't. They're not like a Boston or Milwaukee or Miami where you say that team's an absolute contender. There's, there's some teams out there that it's like, "Mm, I mean, I guess they'd be a little bit better, but I don't know. I'm just saying if they did that to Damien, (laughs) 
what like to me that would just be the ultimate form of disrespect to do that to him and whatever deal you got in that situation better be just absolutely amazing and way better than what was reportedly available from Miami but i'm just saying if if Portland did that to Damian Lillard, what do you think that would mean to the relationship with Dame and this franchise? So obviously <laughs> it would be bad. <laughs> you know, like I'm not gonna but I just don't see it as a scenario. I mean, I don't see why any team that's not gonna contend would draft would trade for a thirty four year old point guard with the largest <laughs> contract thirty three, but you know, he's not gonna contend this year. Uh, a thirty three year old point guard who has you know a super, 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 super contract, you know, like, so, we, why, okay. So here, you do so, oh, sorry, so, it makes so no I'm sense a Bulls fan, as you know. So let's say the Bulls said, okay, we overpaid for Levine. He's kind of regressed since we gave him that money. He's got questionable knees. We'll, we'd rather have Dame in his contract because at least now we have a true point guard than have Levine and we can roll out Dame DeRozan and Nurkic or Vucevic, sorry, and we think that's going to be a better trio than what we have right now. Now I don't know if Portland would even want Zach Levine, but I'm just saying there's a situation where there's a team that has a star with a big contract, so you're going to end up with another star with a big contract, but one who actually fits what you need more because you need a point guard because Lonzo Ball's been out, and so you're like, okay, we'll just we'll take on Dame because it's not that much worse than what we have invested in Levine. That's the kind of situation where I'm like, again, I'm a Bulls fan, so you know, I'm just spitballing here. That's where I can see where for that team, it's a wash almost, not an age, but it doesn't matter because now you got four years of Lillard instead of four years of Levine. So my thing is this: the Bulls go to Dame Lillard and say, "We're going to trade for you." Are you going to Are you going to be happy? He's going to say no because he's going to, he's going to look and at that and says, say, well, "Yes, we're not, you- we're not going to contend." Well, then if he says no, then the Bulls don't make the trade. Why would the you know then I, the Bulls I, don't make the trade? I mean, you're you're expressing something to me that I do not think is a possibility. So you so can't I entertain it. I, I am reluctant <laughs> right. to so, react and, 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 to it. And, right, and, I just can't. It doesn't make overall. I'm with you here. in terms of I, it's really you know we've been saying this for months. It's really really difficult to believe a team's going to do that. I'm just saying, let's say a team did step and say step up and say, okay, we we're willing to move Levine in this situation. Yeah, we know Dame's going to be unhappy, but. We'll try and figure it out, and maybe we'll try and trade Dame ourselves later. The point, the point is, the yeah, point is, the main point that. is, Portland originally was saying they want to be able to send them wherever they want to send them. So if they do that and send them to another mediocre situation, how, like, how ultimately disrespectful would that be? Especially if they didn't really sit down with Miami and try and have a legitimate negotiation session with them to try and figure this out. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I just, okay. not, I can't entertain it. Cause I just don't see it. You know, I mean, I think that the, the, there's no, no team in my opinion is going to trade for Damian Lillard just to trade him again. Cause it doesn't, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense see, the asset is difficult to move. That's why the Blazers are struggling to find a partner possibly. Um, so why would you take that on? Why would you take a 33 year old, uh, if you're not ready to contend now, unless you really thought, and when I say contend, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be this year alone. Right. I mean, like it's a two two three year window. Right. So if you're the, if you were the bulls and you think with Damian Lillard and some young talent, you could be there, um, maybe, but then, but then you'd talk to Dame about that and you'd have to convince him. No team should take to trade for Damian Lillard if he doesn't want to play for you. That doesn't make any sense. Um, and the precedent in the NBA is as such that you don't do it. <laughs> like, I can't think of a situation where someone got traded somewhere as a, a veteran player with a huge contract who didn't want to go to that team. Like, uh, Now, I've got plenty of precedent where they went and then decided that they didn't like it and they wanted out, but not coming in. Um, okay. So then it doesn't make sense. So you're, so you're saying that so if I he doesn't go to Miami, happen. he's at least going to go to a contending situation. Or go to a place that Damon, which Lewis would have to be a okay contending with. situation. Now what he's okay right, with, right. you would right. think based on what everything he said. Right. But, but does that team um, exist? Because Damien Lillard has said he doesn't want to go anywhere else. 
right? So, <laughs> right. Like when I, I just throw this out that this is there's nothing on this or whatever. But like Utah, like is Utah no. a contending team with Damian Lillard? No, but he played college ball there in Utah. Maybe he decides not he wants to go there. I'm not saying. Yeah. I'm just. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm just saying there. I, my my requirement for where Damian Lillard will end up is starts with where Damian Lillard so says he's okay to go. A mystery team if he changes his mind. Well, I, I'm just saying like these conversations of how did he get to where he is with Miami or bust, I don't know. And is this also, uh, could it be a, um, a ploy on their part where they really have three teams, but they're going to make, you know, the Blazers think there's only one until they – they get to a place where that it could so, somehow help them. I think he felt backed into a corner and a little ticked Ooh. off, and oh, that's Damian. why he said Miami or bust. Damien, I think he was like, "Okay, you told me all these things. You told me all these things, and you've always told me that when I want out, that you work with me." And maybe he didn't feel that cooperation. There's, there's no, there's so no he doubt he, say, he didn't feel that cooperation, and so he. He, he flexed. He flexed. And so once he felt he didn't feel and the cooperation. I don't want him to flex. I had to flex too. I, 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 I look, I'm 100% behind what Dane's trying to do. I, to, to me, the, the franchise owes that guy, period. And I don't want to hear about the money. I, I hate it when people bring up the money. It's like the money is to get people act like people act like the Blazers did Damien a favor by giving him a bunch of money. Like they didn't have to. They just gave him a bunch of money. They did him. No, they gave him a bunch of money because he's earned the money. And that's how the contracts work. And he, and he, he well, just, and not only that, you you just made a you made a huge point. You're not buying season tickets, and either are your two your, your two partners. And for years, every single corporate deal that the Blazers made, I don't want to say every single, most of the corporate deals that the Blazers made over the last decade had a tie to Damian Lillard. Season ticket sales tied to Damian Lillard. Playoff money tied to Damian Lillard. So. He he earned the money, and also um, they gave him the contract with a certain understanding. Conversations had. I mean, people – and you're allowed to – when you – in everybody's job, it's your decision whether you work there or not. And sometimes you choose to work at a place, and then the circumstances change, and you decide right. you don't want to work there anymore. Now, in most people's world, you just go find another job that will pay you what you hope will pay you equally. That's not how this works. He's got a contract based on how this this is. So now, um, in many jobs, when and I've been in a situation where I've had a contract, uh, you can you can negotiate out, you know, and and get a new deal. He that's kind of what he's trying to do here. He's negotiating out. He's saying, I would like to go somewhere else where they'll pay me all this money, and then you will not have to, and then you can take on other. A- Assets that might save you money to be where you want to be, which is a team that doesn't want Damian Lillard. I mean, that's the part that that people are forgetting. They they drafted his replacement with a vision to have someone else play his position. No, no, There's they were no going to play them together. Anyone can convince me. Oh my God, Damian! Oh, once Dame played with Scoot, play. he was going to realize I how mean, amazing Scoot was and want to stay. People are freaking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and and that that part doesn't make sense because that's not understanding an athlete's mentality. Who's one of the greatest, you know, players in the world? He doesn't think he should move to the two. And Scoot can't play so, the two. Yeah, all these things. Scoot's the again, third best two. Th- Scoot's the fifth best two guard on the team. <laughs> we don't even know what Scoot can do Scoot. at the one in the NBA. You I, I know, think he he'd hasn't be decent at the one as a facilitator, so, but he can't play the two. He's, he's just not. He's not. Yeah, I, I'm just saying he might. I. I you know, my hope is he's great and that he breaks all of Damian Lillard's records this for the next couple of seasons, and stuff. But, but anyway, there's it's, no, of course he's 19. You know, Damian Lillard was, you I'm know, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not debating his future potential. I'm talking about in Dame. Dame's window, Scoot Henderson does nothing yeah. for Damian Lillard. That's because that's what you're saying. They drafted his right, right other than move him out Dame. of position. So I'm, I, again, I'm going to keep coming down to all that matters is the deal. And all that matters is they make a deal before uh, the, the regular season starts, in my opinion. And I see no scenario where um, they should play Damian Lillard on this team. It The risk-reward doesn't make any sense to me. I do not see the reward 
of starting Damian Lillard and playing him 27 games and hope the heck that he doesn't get hurt uh, at all, that he looks great. And also, oh, wait a minute, we're now going to limit minute, minutes to our 20-year-old, our 19-year-old, and our 24-year-old that we believe is the future of the franchise. And also, you know, um, we'll make it very uncomfortable in a locker room no matter what. And it'll be uncomfortable for marketing people. I mean, there's other things here. Like there's a whole bunch of people that work for the Blazers organization that need to sell season tickets. They need to sell corporate par- partnerships. And it's really hard. No one's going to buy a mm-hmm. deal with Damian Lillard yet. And if you're not showcasing Scoot yet or Shaden Sharp yet as the guy or the, that it's hard to make that deal. So um, they're just going to be putting a lot of people in awkward situations to be able to do their job. And I, I just don't see that. I see that as a huge mistake, but I don't think they've, they haven't made the mistake yet. Let me ask you, last thing before we roll, you're Portland on Miami. I come at you. I say three first hero, figure out what to do with hero. Uh, one of the young forwards and a pick swap. You doing it? And, and then salary matching Duncan Robinson, Lowry, whatever. You taking that? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I mean, that's three first round picks. I mean, and, uh, and a 23 year old, you know, really, really good player. And I just don't, the part about the fit, but, but I, you're going to trade him though, but, I, but you I, trade I mean, him. First of all, like you're I, able to flip hero into another pick or take hero in a pick and turn him into something else you want in a different position or whatever. But that's what, that's sure. what Miami gives up. Would you do that for Damian Lillard? I don't see and how that's, you get better. That's the next point. Can they do better than that elsewhere? And who, like, ideally, they'd get a legit starting young small forward, right? Because that's the biggest hole in the lineup right now. You get someone, yep. like, like you'd get the next, no, you get a Scotty Barnes from a Toronto maybe or something like that. But who's giving that up, right, for a disgruntled dame who doesn't want to play for you? So how do you get there if that's your goal? The only way you get there is if you get some other assets and then make a trade for that guy if the team's willing to give him up for whatever assets you're bringing to him. And then Dame ends up in Miami and that team doesn't have to deal with a disgruntled Dame and you get what you specifically want. So for me, if I'm getting all of this from Miami, now I can go out with that in my own assets and start really trying to build around Scoot, Sharp, and Ant assuming Ant's still going to be here as opposed to try and like create all this drama and hope in hopes that I can actually do better than that. When can you, who's giving you, who's giving you more than that when Dame doesn't want to be there. That's why none of this makes sense. Yeah. I I don't know. (laughs) I, I not the hero thing. I'm not just not, I'm just not hung up on having to trade him right away. I mean, you're not good. You're trying to go play for the lottery anyway. He's 23 years old. So you play a little small here. You, they're, like you're so worried about trying to play, you know, saying you could play Dame out of position. Well, why can't I play Sharp out of position? Let him play some three with Hero at the two. And, you know, play a, you play that small lineup as a Blazers organization so many times. The, he's And then you right. show The argument would be that, well, it's going to be hard for us to move Hero down the line because of his contract and because blah, 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 blah. Sure, blah. if you can move him now, move him now. But his contract's done. And by the way, everyone complains about his contract. The new contracts <laughs> are a lot more than that for guys that are, you know, not as, you remember when you know, had as a, good. Unquote, such a bad contract. Remember that? And, and then right, Dylan and Brooks great. gets $20 million le- well. Twenty million less in his overall deal than Ant. Well, Ant to me is worth way more than that over Dylan Brooks. And then Van Vliet gets well, forty three million a year, shooting under forty percent. But but you yes. got Ant at twenty five a year. Yeah, I mean, come on, it, these things change overnight in terms of what's quote unquote a bad contract. You just played, gr- you just played Grant thirty a year, right? You know, for five a years. lot, a lot of money. And when you look at the stats between Hero and Grant, no. they're not far apart. You know what I mean? Like, and one's younger and obviously Grant's taller and can match up defensively, but it's just not, it's not a ridiculously bad contract in my mind. Um, He's a really good player and he's 23 and he's already, and he can potentially get better. Um, And he's a movable asset in my opinion, 
next year and the year after. And I just don't understand. Like you act like you're, you need to have your team right. together right now. Like, what are you talking about? Your center's use of Nurkic. Be quiet. <laughs> like, this is not your team. Like, you're not like, oh, we need to match up position. We need the perfect five players right now. Like, stop. I mean, this is not where you are as a franchise. You're at. You're going to start a 19 year old point guard. You're going to start a 20 year old two guard. What's the worst? That's <clears throat> six five or whatever. You play small and lo- you can play big and lose. You know, uh, uh, 55 games. You can play small and lose 55 games. It doesn't much matter. And get your get your three or your five in next right. year's lottery, and then worry about having too many young players that have decent contracts that people want. Like. I'm just not hung up on the, oh my God, heroes. Well, you know, that's a ridiculous thing the Blazers would even think about because they don't need the two, yeah, that spot. Gotcha. I'm like, but yeah. here's the thing, though, too. I, just for the record, I think Ant's going to start at the one or the two. And, and, and Scoot Henderson is not beating out Anthony Simons. If they decide to start Scoot, it's going to be because they just want to start Scoot. He's not beating out Anthony Simons. Anthony Simons is going to light him up in practice. Yeah, well, the- Anthony Simons is so – he's so far ahead of him offensively. It's not even close. Save, save it for it's training camp. Close. Save this for training He's got a lot to learn before he's going to be able to beat out someone like Ant. I've watched Ant carry that team against NBA teams, and Scoot didn't do that for his G League team. Anyway, all right, we done here, man. We done with this nonsense. So we're about to crack these back up. Camp's coming up. We're about to do these more often, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll be back with more scuttlebutt about this roster, about this team, about this franchise, about Damian Lillard as he moves forward. But that's it for today. Um, thanks for listening to the Blazer Focus podcast. Please click that subscribe button and give us a positive rating. We would appreciate it. And we'll be back soon. <laughs>